Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Today is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost and the third week of this year's stewardship emphasis. 
Rejoice in the Lord always, rejoice. It also is Commitment Sunday. We welcome all who are worshiping together in person and online as we live stream today's service. Today we give thanks for Greg Fioka and Bob Mollard, who regularly perform as the duo named MOCA, M-O-C-A. They are providing music for worship. Reformation Sunday is next week. Usually Reformation Sunday is Confirmation Sunday at Faith Lutheran Church, but this year that important event is being delayed to spring 2021. Remember, though, that it's traditional to wear red to worship on Reformation Sunday, so get out those red pajamas you are, who are worshiping at home by live stream. Altar flowers are needed for Reformation Sunday, October 25th, and All Saints Sunday, November 1st. Both days are church festivals. Please sign up to sponsor the flowers on those Sundays. The flower chart is on the bulletin board across from the meeting room or call the church office. The cost is $45. The church library is in the midst of a renovation which includes sorting through books and giving some away. Please feel free to take any that are on the tables in the library and enjoy them at home. Finally, please save your ACME receipts now through December 6th and put them in the box marked ACME Community Cash Back located in the Narthex or Welcome Center or in the youth mailbox by Pastor Gene's office. The money we receive from this program will be used to support the youth programs at Faith. And now will you stand for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. You may sit, kneel, or stand as you choose. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the scripture. Today's scripture reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, now that at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. You Philippians indeed know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs more than once. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that accumulates to your account. I have been paid in full and have more than enough. I am fully satisfied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for today's gospel if you're able. Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance to the truth and show deference to no one for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay tax taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Today we can rejoice because uh, Greg is here playing the cello for us. And I told him I had to move my Kleenex closer to my chair uh, so that I uh, would have them when that cello hits me right in the heart and the tears come. Thank you for being here, Greg. And of course, I don't know, Bob's here too. Maybe we should say thanks to him too. Uh, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. Today is our third week that we have been focused on the fourth chapter of Philippians. And when you think about that, that's sort of amazing because it's a small book. And it's not a long chapter. And yet, for three weeks, we've been talking about it. I think what that says to us is that there's a great deal that is meaningful condensed into those, those uh, brief verses. We know from our past studies that the Apostle Paul is writing to the new Christian church in Philippi, and he's telling them, in part, that it's possible to be content, to be at peace, regardless of one's circumstances. In spite of the difficulties that one faces, it's possible to rejoice, not in the circumstances, but in the Lord, who is a powerful presence with them. He goes on to say that he has found that in all things he has the power to act by the one who empowers him. Or the more familiar translation, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we came to the conclusion, I think, last week, that it's no wonder he can rejoice with that kind of, of trust and confidence in God's power with him. And so today we move on beyond those beautiful, inspiring phrases, and Paul actually begins to sound a little bit businesslike. He's talking to the church in Philippi. He's thanking them for their financial support of, of him, they have sent money to him to support him while he's in jail, while he's imprisoned in Rome, and he's grateful for their support. It's interesting because he goes on to note that they have supported him from the beginning, and he seems to be saying that they are the only church that has done so, even though they are a small congregation and a poor congregation. And so he says they are true partners with him in the proclamation of the gospel. And then he gets into what we might consider to be the language of finances or of banking. He refers to the gift that they have sent, and he says he's really not that concerned about the gift, as it is, as he is concerned, and the actual translation, it's not quite the most accurate one in our scripture today, the actual translation is that he is concerned about the interest that will accrue to their account. Now that sounds like banking, doesn't it? But he's not talking actually about money or about profit. He's saying that he is, he is thinking about the fact that their giving to him, their partnership in ministry with him, will have a positive benefit for them. And then he begins to talk about the fact that his account has been paid in full. It almost sounds like a receipt you'd get in the mail after you've paid off a bill. That their account is paid in full. Well, most scholars say that he's once again not necessarily specifically talking about money, although he could be. He could be saying, I have more than enough money to get me through this time of imprisonment. You don't need to send any more. But it's more likely that he's expressing his, the fullness of his joy for their support of him. 
And he talks about that what they have done is like a fragrant incense in God's nostrils. And so therefore, he goes on to say that because of their partnership in the gospel, because of their support of him, because of the way that they have consistently done so, they will be blessed. Which brings us then to that that, uh, important verse, verse 19. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Wow. What does that imply? Let me say it again. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That sounds great. But remember, we have to put it into context. Don't you wish I'd quit bringing up that context thing? But what's the context? He's writing to people who have given sacrificially to support the ministry of Jesus. So as one commentator said, it's not a blank check for the whole human race. I'll quote Pastor Ray Stedman. It, that is this verse, has sometimes been taken to apply to everyone everywhere. It's not that. Half the world goes to bed hungry every night, as you know, and millions, millions live in desperate need of body and spirit. This is not a promise that God is going to meet all the time every need of every human life. Although, and all this is my comment, um, that it's possible, actually, for every need of every human life to be met. <laughs> that is God's will, and we have the resources to do that in our world, but another sermon. And so the straightforward interpretation of that verse is that when we give out of gratitude for God's grace, God will give back. But the question is, how? Let me once again quote Pastor Stedman. That is exactly what Paul is saying here to his dear Philippian friends. He says, You have given to me out of your poverty, out of your lack, at cost to yourselves. I am grateful for that, not because of the gift, which in itself was delightful fragrance in the nostrils of God, But it means that my God will also give back to you according to the riches of Christ Jesus. Now that's an interesting phrase. According to the riches of Christ Jesus. Let's put that into a a, uh, sort of a modern way of looking things. Who's the richest person in the world? Jeff Bezos, I think, at least in the United States, maybe not in the world, the, the owner or the creator of Amazon. So let's say that by some miracle, we were able to go and talk to Jeff Bezos. And we had a project to present to him that there was absolutely no doubt whatsoever that it was a worthy project for him to support. And so we present our case, and the next thing we know, Jeff Bezos takes a checkbook out of his desk. Now, you you have to suspend disbelief a little bit here. I'm sure Jeff Bezos doesn't even have a checkbook. But let's imagine that he's taking the checkbook out of his desk, and he sits down to write us a check for our worthy cause, and we are looking with, 
with anticipation and excitement, because after all, he's the richest person in the United States, and he hands us a check for $20. Now, although we might want to be grateful, I'm not sure we would be, because of the potential. Because you see, what Jeff Bezo has done is he's given out of his riches, he's given us $20 out of his riches. But if he had given us according to his riches, that check would have been much bigger. And it's the same thing here with God. God gives to us according to the riches in Christ Jesus. God gives to us above, beyond what we can possibly imagine. That's grace. And one of the reasons we struggle with the concept of grace is that our, our frame of reference is so limited. But God's frame of F reference is unlimited. And so God gives to us beyond what we can even begin to fathom or grasp. Now this is probably a good time to note, though, that the passage says, and my God will fully satisfy every, what's the next word? Need. Oh. Did you ever think about what God may think that we need? That maybe what God thinks we need and what we think we need may be two entirely different things? So, with all of that, let's get down to the nitty gritty. What do we mean when we say that if out of gratitude we give to support God's ministry in the world, God will give back? Well, I can tell you what I'm almost 99 and 9 tenths for sure, for sure that it does not mean. It does not mean that if I give $100 to support the ministry of Jesus, I'm going to get $100 back. Or 200 Which, if you turn on television, you'll find someone pretty quickly who will tell you that's the case. I'm also wondering if it means that God will make sure that we have food, clothing, and shelter. And the reason I wonder that is that so many of us have more food, clothing, and shelter than we need that it probably is possible, as I said earlier, for everyone in the world to have food, clothing, and shelter. So God has already accomplished that. The rest of it's up to us. But that's another sermon. What I think it does mean is this. What my experience as a pastor for, gosh, how long is it now? 32 years. Ugh, I can't be that old. What my experience as a pastor of some time has shown me is this, and this is true in my own life, I think. When we pause long enough to notice the ways God has blessed us and to be grateful. And when we intentionally and thoughtfully give in response to that gratitude, give from whatever we have. It may not be what others have, but when we give from whatever we have, not just in terms of our money, but also in terms of our time and our abilities. When we do that and make it a priority, 
You know, it's not the last thing on the list after the water bill, the heat bill, the uh, grocery bill, the, you know, playing tennis, uh, going to the movies. I can't do that anymore. When we make it a priority, then God will bless us. And the way God's, God blesses us, and you may think, I think she said this before because I alluded to it the last two Sundays, the way God blesses us is to strengthen our relationship with God. And as our relationship with God is strengthened, we grow in faith, we grow in trust, and as we grow in faith and as we grow in trust, what happens? We begin to be able to find, maybe not all the time, but we begin to be able to find that place of, of profound peace and contentment that Paul talks about. And we are blessed. The Philippians gave out of their poverty for the sake of the gospel. Paul proclaimed them as partners and gave to them, or, or they received then, according to the riches of Christ Jesus. And so do we. And that's why today, Commitment Sunday, is not so much a a financial exercise as a spiritual opportunity. This is a spiritual opportunity because we have the chance, first of all, to think about the ways God has blessed us and then to intentionally and prayerfully consider how am I going to give out of this gratitude to support the ministry of Jesus in this particular congregation and through this congregation into the world. And then we have the opportunity to make a commitment about that, which of course is, is something that is always changeable should there be some purpose or reason for that. We always say that because we assume people are going to have to uh, make their commitment less because something unexpected has happened, what if you inherit a million dollars? Then your commitment could be more. But we don't expect that, most of us. It's a spiritual exercise. And when we engage in it, our relationship with God is strengthened. And that, my friends, is the reason to rejoice. Amen.
<sighs> Isn't that beautiful? Boy, talk about giving according to your riches. That's, that's beautiful. Okay, what are we doing next? Oh, commitment time. Well, I've said I think what I need to say. But I'll just, for those of you who are visiting today, tell you that uh, we're glad you're here and we hope that you won't be uncomfortable. This is something we do all the time, once a year here at Faith Lutheran Church. We ask our members to complete an estimate of giving card and also a, this year we have a brief time and talent uh, form that has some specific items on it in order to be intentional about their giving to the ministry of Jesus Christ here at Faith Lutheran Church. The practical side is it helps us to set our budget and to plan for the coming year. The spiritual side I already addressed. It helps us to be intentional in our giving and also to strengthen our relationship with God. So some of you have filled out your card already and have uh, brought it with you. Maybe you've already put it in the offering plate. If you haven't done so, the ushers have extra cards and extra forms, and we'll give those to you. We're going to pause for a few moments to give you time to fill those out if you need it, or just to, to prayerfully uh, reflect for a few minutes. And then I invite you to bring your card up when you come up for communion, if you haven't already put it in the offering plate. May God bless you in your commitment of yourself to the glory of God. Let's reflect for a few minutes. Please stand for the prayers. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Grace-filled God, we rejoice today that you give, a, give to us according to your riches in Christ Jesus. 
with generosity which is beyond our ability to comprehend. Guide us to give intentionally and thoughtfully of whatever we have to do ministry, making it a priority. And then may we rejoice that we are blessed in return. Lord, in your mercy. Grace-filled God, stir among us during this divided time in our country. Help us to live gently in the world with tolerance and acceptance, especially of those from whom we differ in opinion or politics. Lord, in your mercy. Grace-filled God, may your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that justice and righteousness may prevail. Lord, in your mercy. Grace-filled God, we pray for those living with pain, enduring illness and isolation, and facing surgery or treatment, and all who are grieving. We pray especially for Ruth Norman, who has been hospitalized, and Mark and Joyce Lang and their family as Mark receives hospice care at home. We also pray for the Fioca family, especially Greg and his mother Betty, as she receives hospice care. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we may be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. 
He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly. O God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of the tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. You may be seated and come forward as the ushers direct you. Christ, the body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The 
body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. body and blood of Christ given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ who led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor. You may be seated and the ushers will dismiss you by rows.
Thank you.